With Emperor Battle for Dune, we want to blend the great gameplay of a Westwood real-time strategy game with cutting-edge 3D graphics. We also wanted to revisit the Dune universe because it gives us a chance to tell a great story and gives the game a unique setting. As we get into the game, you should be completely comfortable with the interface and controls. We've added some new features, such as zoom and rotation, but we wanted to make sure that we kept the controls very familiar and simple so that you didn't get lost with the 3D technology. Our goal is to add a new level of strategic depth to the genre. To do that, you'll not only have three different sides to choose from, but you'll have a lot of options about how to customize your army. The three main sides are the noble Atreides, the good guys of the game. They always fight fairly, but can be ruthlessly efficient. Some of my favorite units on the Atreides, the Minotaurus, or my favorite of all, the Mongoose. The Mongoose is a great unit because it can actually fire in different directions from which it's moving. You may also notice that some units have halos around them or glow. These particular units are called scouts. I can see them as they move across the map, but my opponent won't see them coming. Another amazing unit in the Atreides arsenal are the Ornithopters. Their aerial assaults can wipe out enemies in mere moments. Building lost. The Insidious Ordos, always sneaky, always deadly. The Dust Scout, one of the Ordos' rank and file troops, can move rapidly over all types of terrain, whether they be ice, or the spice melange, or the desert sands. Several of the Ordos units have shields, like this laser tank. They protect the unit from initial damage, but don't last very long, perfect for the hit-and-run attacks the Ordos favor. One of House Ordos' most insidious units is the Deviator. When used in battle, it will actually convert enemy units to fight on your side. Many of the units in Dune can be deployed to give them greater firepower and greater range, like the Ordos Cobra. The evil Harkonnen moves slowly, but wields an obscene amount of brute strength. The appropriately named Harkonnen Devastator is a great example of Harkonnen ideology. Although painfully slow in getting to its target, once there, it makes short work of almost any structure or vehicle in the game. Building lost. The Inkvine Catapult can attack enemies from great distances and poisons the very ground where its shells land. Unit lost. And let's not forget the not-so-subtle effect of the flame tank. Besides the three main sides, there are five different subhouses you can ally with. These subhouses will give you new units, each with unique abilities. You can actually join forces with two of the subhouses for even more variation. The Harkonnens surround us. Then we will spill our water, killing as many as we can. Look! If you ally with the Fremen, you will be able to use a stealth warrior that can't be seen until he attacks. A thumper unit that attracts worms, and yes, even a worm rider. The other subhouses include the Tylaxu, which will give you weapons based on genetic mutation. The Ix will give you weapons of stealth and deception. There are also the Guild and the Imperial Sardukar. The Guild tank contains a Guild navigator who can fold space using the Spice Melange to transfer from one place in the world to another and never risk traveling across the dangerous sand. The idea behind the subhouses is to give the player a chance to customize his army and figure out what works best. Is it the Atreides with the Ix and Tylaxu? Is it the Harkonnen combined with the Sardukar and the Guild? You'll have a lot of interesting options to experiment with. All of these factions do have one thing in common, a lust for power. They are each struggling to rule Arrakis. I believe the penalty for treason is death. 
Don't you think I saw this coming? I prepared for it, Kopeck. You won't get away with it. It is a fait accompli. I already have. And it will be civil war! What are you going to do, Gunsang? Throw sand in our eyes? For whoever rules Arrakis rules the universe. In Dune, Arrakis is where spice is mined. Spice is the most valuable substance in the universe. Arrakis is also a desert planet where little lives other than the giant sandworms and the people known as the Fremen. However, the entire game won't be spent on Arrakis. For instance, we'll be able to do battle on the green world of Caladan, home of the Atreides. As you can see, it's a beautiful Earth-like world, home of the Atreides Palace, with crystal blue waters and rolling green meadows, soon to be invaded by the evil Arconan. The Harkonnen hail from the dark, volcanic world of Gidi Prime, where the faces of past barons grin down over the gallows of vanquished foes. Here we see a group of Ordos massing for an assault on the Baron's palace. The Ordos homeworld is Draconis IV, an ice world which well suits the cold souls of the Ordos. As with all Westwood games, Emperor tells a great story. Our production team created amazing film sequences to bring the Emperor universe to life. The cast was led by Michael have, Dorn, who played Worf in Star Trek course. The Next Generation. Do not play the fool. How could you have foreseen this? Our contacts with the Arakeen Smugglers Guild. Do we not have favors to us? Old debts to call in. Oh, of course, my lord. Make the arrangements, then. At once! Emperor is coming together really well. The gameplay is diverse, the 3D engine amazing, and the Dune universe allows us to tell a great story. And to top it all off, we added an innovative multiplayer component. Finally, an RTS where you can play cooperatively through an entire campaign with a friend. As you can see, Emperor is a welcome addition to Westwood's RTS lineage.